Hello physical sciences learners. In this video, I'm going to briefly go over what you can expect for term four of physical sciences. Let's jump right in. Starting with grade tens. Please note that the order of the topics that I mentioned in the video are according to the grade 10 ATP. So these are the teaching plans published by the Department of Basic Education. Your school might teach the topics in a slightly different order to the ATPs, but I base mine on the ATPs. And how can you find the ATPs? Just type in, I typed in grade 11 over here, but you will type in grade 10 physical sciences ATPs 2024, and you'll click on one of these documents over there. So this is what the document looks like. And as you can see in term four, we only have one topic to cover for physical sciences, and that is energy. So what can we ask in energy? We can ask you to define mechanical energy as well as kinetic and potential energy. We can ask you to calculate the energies mentioned above. So you could be asked to calculate mechanical energy or kinetic or gravitational potential. And they all have different formulas that you will be given on a formula sheet. And this is what the formula sheet looks like for this section. It's a good idea to take down these formulae if you don't have them. You'll use these different formulae to calculate the different types of energies. This is potential energy, kinetic energy, and this is mechanical energy over here. Then you'll also be asked to state and apply the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. Now, to apply the principle of conservation of mechanical energy, you need to make use of a formula that is not on the formula sheet. But I do show you how to do this in my videos, so don't worry. You need to be able to apply the principle to a variety of different contexts and situations. So we'll be going through that in my playlist on mechanical energy. Just check out the links in the description box below. How can you prepare for the topics? Well, read ahead in your textbook or your study guide, and then also watch the videos in my playlist on mechanics. Right, grade 11s, let's move on to you. Let's have a look at your topics for the term. So again, remember that the topics, the order of the topics are listed according to the ATPs, the annual teaching plans. And like with the grade 10s, your teacher may have decided to teach topics in a different order. And then what I'm saying in this video may not be applicable to you. So I'm just going according to the ATPs. Just keep that in mind. Remember, you can find the ATPs by typing the following into Google and downloading the ATPs. The first thing in term four is finishing off acids and bases from term three. Now, if your teachers have followed the ATPs, you should have started types of reactions, acids and bases. You are meant to finish that first this term. So remember, go over acids and bases from term three and go watch videos on my channel if you need more help with acids and bases. And then the main topic for this term is called redox reactions, which I am also doing a playlist on. Check out the links in the description box for more information on that coming soon. So redox reactions stands for reduction. So red stands for reduction and reduction is a gain of electrons as stated over here. And ox stands for oxidation, which is a loss of electrons. And these two reactions happen simultaneously. One thing is gaining electrons while the other thing is losing the electrons. So here's everything that you need to know for redox reactions. As I said, I have videos on these or I will be doing videos on them if they don't exist already. So you can check out the links in the description box below. But what I've pasted over here are a lot of the definitions that you need to learn. So study these things off by heart. So if someone says, describe the term oxidation in terms of electrons, you'll say oxidation is a loss of electrons. Or if they say, describe reduction in terms of oxidation numbers, you will say that reduction is a decrease in oxidation numbers. So things like that. You also need to know how to balance redox reactions using table 4A and 4B. Different schools use different tables. I use table 4B. Again, I'll cover that in a video. So how can you prepare? Read ahead in your topic and watch videos in my playlist. Remember to subscribe to my channel for help with all of these topics this term. Keep an eye on my website for study guides. And now Matrix, if there's any of you watching this video, let me quickly go over what is expected for your final exam, which I'm sure you know, but a quick, a quick recap doesn't hurt. 
Symmetrics, as you know, just like for your prelim exam, you have two papers, paper one physics, three hours, 150 marks. And then of course, paper two chemistry, same time, same mark allocation. They count equally towards your final mark. Now remember, Final exams count 75% towards your final complete end of year mark. So everything that you did throughout the year in matric counts 25%. Your final exam, 75%. So it's very important that you practice all your past papers and prepare well for this. This is essentially the breakdown of topics for your physics paper. So out of the 150 marks, 65 of those marks will come from mechanics. And these are the sections that they will test under mechanics. Then wave, sound and light will be about 15 marks. And that is the Doppler effect. Then you've got 55 marks for electricity and magnetism. That is your circuits. That is your electrodynamics, motors and generators, and electrostatics. And then matter and materials. That is the photoelectric effect, which counts around about 15 marks. These are more or less approximate marks. So for example, the Doppler effect might be 13 marks instead of 15 marks, but it's around about this mark allocation. And for your chemistry paper, there's a bit of a bigger divide here. The first one is called matter and materials. That's mostly your organic chemistry and the intermolecular forces. Now, I've said this before in my videos and live classes. 58 out of 150 marks. That is a lot of marks to go towards organic chemistry. It's about 30% at least, 30 to 38%, somewhere around there. So organic chemistry is a big portion of your paper. You need to master that. The rest of your paper is split between all the other topics. It's a good idea to visit other past papers, so final papers for grade 11, for grade 12, sorry, and look at the, the mark allocation smaller. So you'll see, for example, that acids and bases, the questions are usually 15 to 20 marks. Sometimes can be a little bit more, but usually around there. Then electrochemistry, you get a galvanic question and an electrolytic question around between 10 and 15 marks per question. So it's a good idea to get familiar with this and practice as many past papers as possible. I wish all of you the very, very best for the final term of the year. Remember to keep an eye on my channel for more videos that might help you this term. I can't wait to hear about all your excellent results at the end of the year. And I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye, everyone.